All right, let's break this down. So you're dispatched to a local mechanic shop for a traumatic injury. Uh, they said the mechanic was putting on a commercial truck tire when it exploded and the patient's now complaining of chest pain, difficulty in breathing, and is unable to hear. So when you get there, the patient's a 40-year-old male. Uh, he has no medical history. He's alert and oriented times four, complaining of diffuse chest pains that hurts on palpation and inhalation. Okay, and across that chest, he got bruising and abrasions that he's speaking in nearly full sentences, uh, speaks in a very loud voice, and he's unable to hear out of that right ear. His skin is pink, warm, dry, and has a strong radial pulse. His blood pressure is 126 over 74, heart rate's 98, a normal sinus rhythm, breathing 24 times a minute at 95% on room air. His lungs on auscultation are shallow and diminished at the bases. Okay, so looking at those vital signs, nothing crazy sticking out. Um, you know, getting closer to that hypoxia, shallow, diminished bases, and a little bit of tachypnea at 24 minutes. All right, so we asked which of the following two answers could be the causes for the patient's shortness of breath? Tension pneumothorax, thoracic fractures, simple pneumothorax, a PE, aortic dissection, and toxic inhalation. So let's kind of break down what each of these would be. So a tension pneumothorax, that is when there is compression on um, your heart and it's reducing overall perfusion. So with a tension pneumothorax, they're going to be very short of breath, have hypotension, um, pale, cold, diaphoretic skin, you know, showing serious signs of symptom of shock, so we can scratch that one off. Thoracic fractures, okay, so breaking ribs, breaking sternum, anything in your thoracic region. So, yeah, this could cause that. So let's keep adding in there as a possibility. A simple pneumothorax, that could cause, um, you know, it's not as bad as a tension pneumothorax, but that's where, you know, your lungs, one of them or both of them are just not really working. So having absent diminished sounds. So is that a possibility? Yes. So we'll keep that one in the playbook as well. A pulmonary embolism. So with that, they're going to be short of breath, hypoxic with clear breath sounds. So there's no volume issue with a PE. It's only a gas exchange and perfusion issue. So not hypoxic. They're not pale. Um, they're having a volume issue, it seems, so we're going to scratch that one out. Aortic dissection. The big giveaway of that is if they have chest pains and they have different perfusion to the right and left side of their body and they're going to be hypotensive. So they're not, not really showing any signs of shock, so we can kind of tear that one away. And it's going to be constant pain, not worse than one inhalation palpation. Uh, toxic inhalation. Nothing really can give that away. So that would have to be a very far-stretched thing of they're filling the air, the tire up with some type of weird off-the-ball gas. But if you're thinking about that, you're way too deep in a wormhole. All right, so what we're left with is those thoracic fractures. Yeah, you break ribs. hurts to take a deep breath. It hurts when you touch. And that's going to cause it shallow breathing. So it could be that. And it could be that simple pneumothorax. A thing to think about is in this scenario, the patient had uh, an explosion happen and it made them go deaf in one ear. If it is enough pressure to rupture that membrane in your ear to make you deaf, it's also enough energy to rupture your lungs. So yeah, it could be a simple pneumothorax. Now remember, like it's not just one lung, it could be both. So both of those are two absolute possibilities to keep in your head for your differential diagnosis.